Hi everyone, today I am going to introduce the life cycle of cocoa. In this video, we will know what is cocoa, the origin of cocoa, the life cycle stage of cocoa, and the impact of the life cycle of cocoa. Let's go to part 1. Let me tell you what is cocoa. The cocoa bean or simple cocoa is a dried and fermented seed of Theobroma cacao from which cocoa solids and cocoa butter can be extracted. Apart from that, do you know what is the use of cocoa beans? The cocoa bean is the basis of chocolate, and Mesoamerican foods including tejate, an indigenous Mexican drink that also includes maize. The three main varieties of cocoa plants are Fistero, Criollo, and Trinitario. What's more, if you taste cocoa before, will you care about the origin of the cocoa? The cacao tree is native to the Amazon basin. It was domesticated by the Olmecs, Mexicans. As far back as Olmeca civilization in spiritual ceremonies. And I want to tell you some history that you do not know in 1905, Cadbury's company's main products were still coffee and tea, but nine years later, the company's milk chocolate became a household name, and it became the number one chocolate product in the UK. Had it not been for the sudden outbreak of war, their milk chocolate would have sold better. In 1939, when Britain declared war on the Nazis and went into war material control, Cadbury was forced to stop making milk chocolate and instead produce chocolate rations for its soldiers. But do you ever heard about life cycle assessment? This is a tool that used to measure a product's impact on the environment. Basically, it talks about a product's whole life which is from a candle to a grave. In this video, the life cycle assessment of cocoa production has five stages, which include raw material production, manufacturing, transportation, consumption, and disposal. The raw material production process will need to use fossil fuels, minerals, water, farming, seeding, and harvesting. The second step is manufacturing. The fermentation needs cocoa beans covered with boxes for four to six days. This fermentation process removes the moisture and flesh from beans and then they go through the fermentation. The workers will separate them out in the sun until the beans are completely dried. In factories, cocoa beans are sent to a series of screening processes, leaving their bean shell. The factory will bake the nibs of cocoa to add flavor, and more than 50% of the nibs are fat or cocoa butter. After all series of refining, heating, and the refining, cooling process, the chocolate is done. By this time the processing is complete. And the next step is transportation. With the development of globalization, there are more and more private cars which caused environmental pollution. In summer, the transportation of chocolate requires trucks with air conditioning. It also increases carbon emissions. Then they disturb the chocolate to individuals or businesses for sale. What coming next is consumption. Cocoa was introduced to Europe by the Spanish in the 16th century. When the dried cocoa powder was mixed with sugar water, which opens the cocoa's boom. And here comes a lot of brands of chocolate like a Dove, Rocher, Meiji, Le Conte, and etc. Besides, I want to talk about cocoa production. In 2017, the world production of cocoa beans was 5.2 million tons, led by the Ivory Coast with 38% of the total. The final step is disposal. There has a new show that about 45% of people would not recycle the package of chocolate, they will just throw it away. Another situation is according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, about a third of the food produced each year never ends up on people's tables, wasting 1.3 billion tons of food. Much of the food wasted in poor countries is wasted because it is improperly stored as a meal for pests or rots on potholed roads and in long haulage. In rich countries the picture is different, some foods are left unbought on supermarket shelves, while others are bought and then put back out of date. However, the impact on cocoa's LCA shows that it will bring deforestation. Cocoa has been a driver of deforestation, with cocoa grown in plantations or agroforestry systems replacing the original forest ecosystems in many regions. Cocoa production makes the largest contribution to the environmental impacts of eutrophication, ozone layer depletion, freshwater aquatic ecotoxicity, human toxicity, and terrestrial ecotoxicity, with average contributions greater than 96%. At the industrial processing stage, the use of natural gas instead of diesel oil for roasters and boilers is recommended due to its relatively low emissions. And the conversion of semi-deciduous forests to cocoa plantations resulted in plant diversity and species richness loss due to the disappearance of a huge number of native species. 
while earthworm abundance and species richness increased due to the appearance of species adapted to degraded lands so it is all about cocoa's production process if you want to know more interesting things that you do not know, please subscribe to us.